we doing everybody? Obviously, your favorite people in the world, Bill and Vince here. <laughs> we are I don't know about that. <laughs> we are on our way up to Charlotte right now to film a super, super special video for y'all in the R8. But the last few weeks we've been getting a lot of questions and we want to just put out a quick Q&A video to update y'all about some things about the shop, answer some of the things that we get questioned about the most, whether it be in the videos or in, in person. Uh, so we'll just get right into it. Uh, first come. Nope. <laughs> you ain't got my code, man. <laughs> I don't have Vince's phone code. We got all the questions right here. So, first and foremost, Vince, when did Creative Rod start? Okay, so Travis and I have been together for six years, but Creative Rod started before that. Um, probably four years before that. Creative Rods has been around for 10 years. Travis had another partner. Um, we, we teamed up at uh, an appointment back in 2017, and uh, there was three of us. Um, we ended up buying out the other partner, so Travis and I uh, on it 50-50 today. But so, uh, in re realistically, 10 years, Travis has been doing uh, classic car restoration for all of his uh, adult life. And so, uh, 10 years, but six years together. So, I guess that also brings us to, how did you meet Travis? You said it was 2017, right? So, I met Travis, I believe, back in 2016. Um, he painted a 1969 Pontiac GTO for me. And during that process, um, we talked about, you know, building a business together. Travis had some big plans. He wanted to build a bigger, uh, bigger shop and um, do more expensive builds, that sort of thing. So um, at the end of that uh, you know, paint job and everything, we had worked it all out, you know, buying the building that we're in now. And um, it just started building the business from them, Creative Rods. That's awesome. So that was almost six years ago now. I'm sure you guys have done a lot of really cool projects and restorations since then. But currently, what do you have in the shop right now that everybody wants to see? Well, based on social media, I believe it's the uh, Indian Outlaw, the 59 Apache. Yeah, uh, that's a popular car. Uh, we'll they, so we have the 59 Indian Outlaw, which is obviously a fan favorite. People love seeing that truck everywhere on social media. What else do you have? Uh, we got the 69 Green Lizard Camaro that we're putting flush mounted glass in, and we'll have to re uh, repaint that. Your guys will see more on that, or you may already have by the time this video comes. Out, but, well, uh, and as we're talking about it, let's roll some B-roll with that. Uh, we've got a 91 Land Rover Defender uh, that's highly customized. Uh, it's going to be bad to the bone. Right hand drive diesel. I think personally that's my favorite thing y'all have in the shop right now. I yeah. love that thing. It's, it's, we'll, have, we'll have to do more video on it because it's, it's extremely customized. Yeah, it's um, absolutely amazing, guys. So it's got a, a, a what, three inch wide body kit? Or yeah. is it bigger? Uh, wide body, yeah, probably two inch wide okay. body kit. So it's got a big wide body on it, a custom bumper, custom hood, and then a carbon fiber roof with panoramic glass all the way through it. And then all the windows around it are all flush on a glass. It, it looks insane. So, and it's even got a disco ball. That's right. <laughs> and mood lighting. Yeah. Um, we got two 70 Camaros. One's getting ready to go to interior. And uh, it's a highly customized uh, Chevelle. Uh, one is getting ready to go into the body shop. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, we got Shannon's uh, back backdated Porsche. We're doing a little cosmetic front and rear bumper on. Oh, 67 Impala. It's getting ready to go in paint here in the next few weeks. And a 1936 Ford Street Rod truck is getting ready to go to interior next week as well. Man, it sounds like y'all are busy. Uh, we just got a bunch of projects <laughs> right now that are close to the end. We want to wrap up. We also have two or three small projects in the shop we're trying to get those out Broncos and K5 Blazers and so forth but um, we usually keep a stacked shop full with a waiting list so that leads me to my next question does the shop actually 
specialize in restoring a certain type of car? No, just classics. Um, usually to the uh, early 70s and older. We have done like an 87 Grand National. Um, you know, with the trucks becoming popular like square bodies and OBS trucks, we got a 93 OBS we'll be starting on for, our, from a, for a previous customer. Um, usually trucks are okay up to the 90s, but really not doing any cars. Uh, maybe a 79 Trans Am or something like that, but usually try to keep it in the early 70s and older. Awesome. And then, what's your favorite car or truck that you have restored in the shop and why? Well, that's going to have to be the Indian Outlaw. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I don't even have to ask why. Well, I mean, to be honest, the reason why is because we got to build it the way we wanted to. Yeah. A lot of times with, uh, with customers, uh, you know, they have ideas of what they want to see and all that. So we don't have free creative uh, control over it. But with the Indian Outlaw, we had complete control and uh, it's going to be bad. You're going to see it coming soon. Heck yeah, it's really bad. And then, what is the farthest somebody has ever brought their car or truck to y'all? Alright, so we've got, uh, I don't know which one of these are, are the furthest, but we've got Texas, we've got like upstate Michigan, almost near the Canadian border, New York, Wow. See, that's where I'm I'm from upstate New York, y'all, and that's a 13-hour drive, and I don't like doing that myself. <laughs> so that is awesome. Obviously, you have clients all over the place from the sounds of it. Going off that, what's the most anybody's ever spent restoring a car with y'all? Um, I want to say probably right around 400000 Wow. Do you know what car it was? I really don't want to say because okay. I don't, I don't want to give away Yeah. Anything much information on it. sometimes people can narrow it down to what yeah. car it is so, you know. so what all went involved in that what was the process like um it was you know that build started off as an eighty thousand dollar build and, and, and built into that so that really tells you most of the time when a car comes in it starts one place and it evolves now this obviously evolved a pretty good amount but <laughs> um you know yeah. um you know, just a lot of custom works bump, bumper tub flush mounted glass, you know, the steering wheel in the car is for 1200 bucks. Um, so, I thought that was plain in them, but, um, so, just one thing led to another, and uh, a lot of customization and so forth. Awesome. Now that we're talking about pricing, if anybody's watching this right now and they're curious, what does it take to get into y'all's shop, and how much does the average build cost, can you kind of give them some more details about that? Okay, so like a full frame off restoration, you know, we're taking the car all the way down to the frame. We're, we're uh, tearing the frame apart back down to just the metal, and we're sandblasting and building all the way back from, up from scratch. Every nut and bolt is touched. Also, um, all of our paint jobs are show quality. We don't do driver quality, anything. So it's, it's basically show car when you get it done. And I know that's not for everybody, but that's just how we do it at our shop. So basically, you're probably starting it you know, 150,000 and going up from there, just to, again, to, depending yeah. on the complexity of the build, you know, how, what kind of shape the car is in and so forth. And then I want to ask one final question. If anybody's watching this video right now who just loves classic cars and they want to get into this type of business, what kind of tips do you have for them that you can give them that you've learned over the years? Um, you know, it's a very, uh, talented group of people. You know, you're typically not going to, um, your collision shop worker is not typically your hot rod shop worker unless they've worked uh, in a hot rod shop before. So we, we, we've hired people that work for collision shops. They just moved over there, but they want to get back into it. So it's a specialized field. You know, it's, it's, you have to have a passion for it because you're paid by the hour versus um, in a collision world, you're paid by the you know, mission and so forth yeah so um, one you got to have a passion for and I know people don't like to hear this but you really have to have experience or be willing to uh, go to work for a shop that's willing to, to train you and so I do want to mention with you bringing that up I think you're looking for some employees right now is that correct yeah we people ask if we're hiring yeah and just because of the simple fact of what I just said 
we're always hiring. So, you know, if someone comes across our desk or comes into the shop that has experience in our industry, we're going to really look seriously at uh, finding out more about them and hiring. Well, I think we can do this too. So we'll put an email below in the description. If you guys have experience in what Vince is talking about, send us an email and with your resume. And who knows, maybe, maybe y'all could be talking more soon. Exactly. Sounds good. All right, guys, I think that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want to see more of these, again, let us know in the comments below. Put any questions you may have for us down there. And we'll see y'all in the next one. See ya.